Hello Sustainable Growers, this is Jonathan from Melbourne Aquaponics. My aim is to help you to grow sustainable, healthy and tasty food in your backyard thanks to aquaponics. So today I would like to talk about cold water aquaponics. So what is cold water aquaponics? So when we talk about cold water aquaponics, we generally talk about aquaponics that is applied in cold countries. So cold countries is anything that is below 15 degrees Celsius. So just to give you a bit of an example, where I come from in France, I come from the border to Switzerland on the very east part of France, close to the mountains, and there the temperature can fluctuate and the, the range is very wide. So in winter, we generally go uh, below minus 25 degrees Celsius, and the extreme we have is minus 40 degrees Celsius. So you see that it can be extremely cold in winter, but in summer we can have plus 30 and very often plus 40 as well. So you see it, go, it goes from minus 40 to plus 40 so degrees Celsius. So you, go, you got a very, very wide um, uh, thermal uh, range. And that's where we're gonna work in aquaponics. So obviously in summer, uh, we're gonna be in warm water, but in winter, we're gonna be in cold water. But is aquaponics really working in cold water conditions? Uh, the challenge we have with aquaponics is that when we got cold water temperature the bacteria are going to work very slowly but also uh, the activity of the fish is going to be very very low so the fish are not going to grow fast and also uh, the vegetables you know that the plants they need a certain temperature and if the temperature is too low then you're not going to have any significant growth on your vegetables neither so now uh, the trick is to select some very adapted spaces. So what type of fish are adapted to cold water aquaponics? I would recommend in cold water countries to work with trout, uh, with carps, or with any specific fish that is able to grow in those conditions. Uh, uh, so for example, you got also some types of uh, catfish that are able to grow in cold water conditions. You got some species of uh, crayfish that are able to grow in those conditions as well. So you need to find the adapted spaces so look in the area where you live what type of fish are growing in the rivers what type of fish are the fish farmers growing and that's basically what you want to grow in your setup so as you understand uh, if the temperature is very low we are not going to have any growth but the challenge is to maintain our system alive so that in summer we can have a growth for a few months so obviously the productivity of a cold water aquaponics is never going to be as good as a warm water aquaponics. But what we want is to keep the system all alive during the coldest months of the year to boost the productivity during summer. So during those cold months in winter, there are different options. I see two real options. One is to basically uh, try to maintain positive temperature because you know that the water below zero degrees is going to freeze, right? So it's going to form a block of ice and there your fish are not going to be able to survive in the ice. You know, they need water to, to live. So uh, that's the challenge we have in cold water countries, especially in extreme, extreme river. Uh, when the temperature is negative, we need to maintain our water temperature positive. So uh, you can do this by first put your tank in the ground. So you're going to have an insulation thanks to the earth around and it's going to limit the water temperature to drop dramatically. Um, one thing that is very important is to grow your aquaponics into a greenhouse inside to avoid the wind and to avoid the extreme uh, cold weather to be in contact with the setup. So greenhouse, uh, fish tank either in the soil or put a very good insulation around the fish tank uh, and then if you can you can heat the system so uh, there are different ways if you have a greenhouse you can uh, heat inside the greenhouse but unfortunately if you look if you use conventional methods uh, you may have some trouble to stay to remain sustainable uh, you know there is no point using a lot of gas using a lot of electricity uh, to uh, maintain the setup if it costs a lot uh, for you uh, 
in terms of money, but also uh, for the environment. So what we want is to find a sustainable way to maintain the system. Well, uh, one of the, the good ways to do it is to use a compost heater. A compost heater? The idea of a compost heater is that you're going to have the pipe that is coming from the fish tank. It's going to go uh, through the compost, so the pipe is going through the compost. And you know that in the compost you've got this reaction uh, depending on the type of compost you are doing, but if you have a fermentation, uh, it's going to release some heat, and in this case, uh, the heat can be absorbed by the by the pipe. So the water going back into the system is heated, and therefore you can heat your system uh, completely free thanks to this type of uh, um, mechanism, thanks to the compost heater basically. So then the water that is coming back into the grow bed is a bit higher in terms of temperature. And in this case, you can maintain a positive temperature. The target is to maintain the temperature uh, above 10 degrees, because that's when you start to have a growth of your fish, especially for trout, uh, even the carps. Most of the fish below 10 degrees, you know, most of the time they, they, they grow very slowly, while above 10 degrees, above 15, it's even better but above 10 degrees, they start to have a significant growth. So in terms of greenhouse, it can be interesting to work with a climate battery greenhouse. Okay, and what is a climate battery greenhouse? So uh, the system is working this way. You know that in the day, sometimes you got uh, the sunlight, so the temperature in the greenhouse increase, but then during the night, the temperature falls. And that's where you're gonna have the big uh, fall in temperature into your, into your greenhouse and therefore into your water. So the idea is to basically average, balance the temperature between the day and the night. And uh, a climate battery greenhouse is basically going to trap the temperature, basically it's going to blow the air from the greenhouse, inside the greenhouse during the day, it's going to blow the air in the foundation of the greenhouse. So the concrete below the greenhouse is going to absorb the heat and during the night uh, it's going to do the same thing, it's going to blow the air underneath and it's going to raise the air in the greenhouse. So basically all this temperature, all the heat that was trapped during the day is released during the night. So in this case you really average the temperature and you avoid the big drop of temperature during the night. So in this case you avoid to drop the temperature in your greenhouse. So it really helps to average the temperature in your greenhouse. Now, if you are in a low budget and if you are just starting aquaponics, what I recommend to do, if you don't have the possibility to have a greenhouse and uh, you know it can be quite expensive, is to basically uh, have a productivity that is going to be significant only in summer and in winter you just want to keep the system alive. But what happens if the water freeze? Can the fish survive? So here the, the challenge will be to keep the fish alive during winter. And therefore, what we want to do, we want to avoid to have the whole uh, depth of uh, the, the fish tank that is going to freeze and it's going to form an ice block. What you want is to allow a bit of ice on the surface, but no ice on the very bottom of the tank, right? You want to keep water on the very bottom of the tank. So uh, the idea here is to just try to preserve the structure, to work with very low density of fish and to leave the fish in the tank during winter and that's fine you know in the lake the fish are in the in the water and the top of the lake is frozen but underneath there is water and the fish are remaining alive right so the water generally is below four to zero degrees so it's very cold and on the top you got a layer of ice so the idea here is to preserve the fish tank because you know that when you're going to have some ice that is going to be formed on the fish tank you know that the ice is taking more uh, volume than the water so it's going to create a large a very strong pressure on the walls of the tanks and if you have fiber ta fiberglass tanks it's going to damage the structure it's going to break them plastic tanks is the same and even if you got a wooden structure it can really damage everything so what we want to do, we want to put some floats in the tanks, same as they do in the swimming pools. You know those floats, you put them on the surface and basically they're going to absorb uh, the pressure of, uh, of, the, of the ice. You know, when the ice is putting some pressure on the side of the walls, basically the floats are going to absorb this pressure and it's going to minimize the impact on your tanks. So it's very important to do that if you have an aquaponic setup outside in a cold water 
um, uh, conditions and especially in winter you want to avoid the top uh, to freeze and to break uh, the whole structure so putting the floats is really going to help uh, regarding your pump you know that you have a pump in the fish tank that is raising the water to the grow bed this pump you're going to stop it during winter because uh, if the pipe uh, freeze uh, the pump is going to break but also the pipe if it freeze is going to is going to break as well right it's going to be full of water and when the water expands it's going to break the pipe so what you want you want to turn the water off so then the pipe is going to be empty and therefore you are not going to have this problem of having the pipe that breaks you can even remove the pipe from the water it's going to be even better it's going to allow you to preserve the pipes during the coldest months so when you know that you're going to be in negative temperature you remove all the pumps and uh, you just leave the setup as it is if you have some hardy fish that don't consume too much oxygen in low density they're going to remain alive uh, underneath the ice for the coldest months and as soon as the warm uh, weather is coming back so when the temperature is becoming positive again then you can put everything back and you can turn the pump on and you are ready to go for the good season so because we are in cold water we may have the top of the fish tank that is going to freeze right so what you want to do if you work in those conditions you want to have a fish tank that is a bit deeper than the norm to keep a very good volume of water not uh, frozen below the ice underneath the ice and there you're going to have uh, the fish that are going to be able to survive also another thing that can be interesting is to basically raise the pump you know that normally in aquaponics we want the pump as low as possible because we want the pump to be able to absorb all the faces of the fish all the you know all the particles that can be into the water and you know that the particles uh, if they are heavy they're gonna uh, they're gonna fall down in the tank and that's where you want the pump to be able to suck them but in cold water aquaponics when you are in very extremely cold conditions what you want to do you want to leave the very bottom of the tank uh, quiet you don't want to create too much water movement on the very bottom uh, in this case the fish are going to be on the very bottom and because the cold is coming from the top you know with from the exchange with the air and the water the top is going to be very very cold uh, it's going to be frozen so you can have the ice but on the very bottom you can keep an area where the water is not moving too much and you avoid the exchange of temperature between uh, the surface and uh, the bottom of the tank in this case it's better to increase the height of the pump a little bit so instead of putting the pump on the very bottom of the tank if you have a tank that is one meter deep you put your water pump at 50 centimeters high in this case you're going to have the water circulation on the top but on the very bottom you're going to keep 50 centimeters of water that are not going to move too much and thanks to the insulation you have with the with the soil if you are in an underground tank or if it's very insulated thanks to some whatever cardboard and uh, polystyrene foil and whatever system you use to insulate your tank then you're going to be able to keep the 50 lower centimeters more quiet and better for the fish so you want to avoid too much movement into your water for cold water extreme conditions in winter another trick you can use is to obviously cover your tank especially in uh, during the night because you want to avoid the maximum the exchange between uh, the, the air and the water so obviously you understand that you are not going to produce as much as in a warm water uh, aquaponics setup but uh, the idea in cold water countries is to have a, a production during the, the warmest months and to maintain the system in good conditions during winter now if you have the ability to work in a greenhouse and to use the compost heating system or any other system that is sustainable it can be solar you got different options then you're going to be able to maintain good conditions during all year round so if you are new to this channel please subscribe i'm going to release one video every week but also don't forget to get your free guide to build your own aquaponics setup from the description just below the video it's a free guide step by step to help you to build your own aquaponic setup but also to get some very important knowledge uh, to be able to maintain your aquaponic setup in good condition so that's a very very 
it's going to help you to have some very good base in aquaponics it's completely free so get it from the description of this video if you have any question please don't hesitate to ask on the comment section just below the video uh, i regularly check this section so i'm going to respond to all your questions so uh, feel free to ask me anything that is unclear or that i haven't treated in the video next week we're going to talk about oxygen in aquaponics so stay tuned and see you next week bye bye don't forget to get your free gift from this screen you can also leave me a comment below the video subscribe to the channel and see my last video i really hope to see you soon and i wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics have a good crop